All right, in this video, what I'm gonna show you how to do is write a quadratic equation, quadratic function, given a table of values. So what we have here is a table of values, and we're no longer writing things in y equals mx plus b. Now we're writing quadratics out, so you are now at the point where y equals ax squared plus bx plus c needs to be written as your equation. We know that because we do not have a constant rate of change happening here. As you see, as we start to look at our change in y, we're gonna notice that nothing here is constant. We're going up one, up two, up three, and up four. What we're dealing here with is a quadratic. All right, what you need to do in order to find out the equation for a quadratic is you need to determine what the A, the B, and the C values are. Okay, I'm gonna tell you how to find each one of those. So we're gonna to need to find A, we're gonna to need to find B, and we're gonna to need to find C. I'll write those off to the side and we'll track them as we find them. A is found, okay, A is going to be found from your second difference, your second difference. And what that means is, we look here, we do not have a constant rate of change on our change in Y, so we go to our second difference. Between those numbers, what's happening? 1 to 2, plus 1. 2 to 3, plus 1. 3 to 4, plus 1. I like what I'm seeing. I'm going to circle it. That's going to help me to find my A, all right? So A comes from your second difference, one, divided by two. Second difference divided by two. So I went my first difference, one, two, three, four. Second difference, one, one, one. So I'm gonna take one, that's my top or my numerator, to one over two. So I now know that A is one over two. I'm gonna put that over here so I can keep track of it. All right, A is one half. B is what we'll find last. C, however, C is your zero term. When X is zero, where are you at? It's also known as the Y-intercept. You probably know that from your linear equation unit back in Algebra 1 or pre-algebra. All right, so we have our starting point, or our y-intercept. So we go to our table, our zero term is five. That's our starting value, so c is five. Hey, I've got two of the three parts that I need. The trickiest one to find, however, is b, and here we go. Now, a lot of times kids are stuck, they're like, well, just tell me how to find b. Well, I can't, other than plugging in information here, 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 and leaving b to be the only variable left and then we can solve. Remember back when you were solving for x all the time? You know, you had to do the distributive property, inverse operation, all that good stuff to get x by itself. Well, we're gonna write a y down, an a down, an x down, an x down, and a c. The only variable left is gonna be b, and then we'll just work downward to solve for it. All right, so let's write what we know. I know y equals, I know a can be written as one half x, squared plus b x plus five because I changed the c to a five because I know it's my zero term. Well, this is all fine and dandy except I'm still missing b. And the only way to get b is if I can change that x to a number, that x to a number, and that y to a number so I can start to simplify some things. Well, where in the world am I gonna find some x values and some y values? Yeah, I was just blocking it. Look at that, you've got a ton of possible numbers that you could plug in there. Pick one and go with it. I recommend not using zero, okay? So I always use the one that's closest to zero because those are typically the lowest numbers and small numbers are easy to work with. Come on, quit making your life hard. I got kids that will always choose four and 15 or these big numbers and I'm like, you're just making your life more challenging. Pick the easiest two numbers you can find. One and six look great, two and eight look great. Now. I will tell you one thing right now. If I'm gonna take something and square it and then multiply it by a half, I'd like to get a whole number here, ideally. That means I need an even. If I put a one in and square it, I get one, and then multiply it by a half, I'm gonna get a decimal, 0.5. I prefer not doing that, so I'm actually gonna use two and eight, okay? Two is my x, so put a two wherever x is. Eight is my y, so put a eight where the y is. Bring everything else straight down, one half, square it, b, 
and plus five. So now what we have is we have an equation that we can simplify on the right side and then inverse operate everything over to the left so that b is isolated over here. All right, let's start doing it. Two squared is four. Four times one half plus b times two plus five. Half of four is two plus I'm just gonna put that two on the, in front as a coefficient, two b plus five. And remember it's equal to eight. All right, let's put the common, or uh, what we're gonna combine our like terms, two and five, put those together to make seven. Seven plus two b equals eight. And because I'm running out of room right here, I'm just gonna take this information, write it up over here, and then you can finish working down. Eight equals seven plus two B. Take away the seven, cancels. Take away the seven. Eight minus seven is one. One is equal to two B. Divide by two, divide by two. B is equal to one over two or one half. Now I know what my B is, and I know all three values that I need to write my equation out. Okay, I'm gonna write it right up here so you guys can see it nice and clear. I know my A, I know my B, I know my C. Where did A come from? Well, it came from finding the first difference in the Y column and then going out to the second difference and dividing it by two. That's the A. C comes from finding the zero in the table. It's the zero term. And then B, you plug everything that you know in work it all out, and isolate B to know what its value is. Our final answer would be, changing that B term, right there, to what we found it to be, one half X. Y equals one half X squared plus one half X plus five. That quadratic equation would give you any value that you need continued through this pattern. I could now throw a 20 in there on a test and say, what would y be? You would put 20 here and here to determine what it is. Matter of fact, let's actually just go through with that because you're probably gonna be asked a question like that on your test. Let's figure out what y would be if x is 20. y is equal to 1 half times 20 squared plus one half times 20 plus five. 20 squared, 20 times 20, is gonna be 400. We're gonna cut that in half, which is gonna give us 200. Plus one half times 20, half of 20 is 10, plus five. So y is equal to 200 plus one plus 10 plus five. 215. All right, hopefully this is making sense to you. Study hard and good luck on your upcoming test.